Hope you're doing good. Michael back with another video. Back here to talk about iPad OS 17.4 and the small but necessary goodies that came to the iPads with this new update. So without further ado, we're not even going to skip a beat. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, it's all free. That way you know it's my video so you and I can sit back check, see what's cracking. And now, let's get into it. I am rocking the iPad Pro 12.9 version with the M2 chip. And so, maybe I'll get into that in my iPad Pro video in terms of what Apple has really kind of been doing behind the scenes with it with the M2 and M1 chips in, pretend, in particular with these updates. But in terms of iPad OS 17.4, this is what we got going on. The first thing I'm gonna do is jump into settings. And let me know if this angle is working for you guys. I'm using a case to kind of prop it up and try to get it good with the camera. So let me know if, if this works for you guys because I'll probably do this going forward with my iPad videos in terms of software and whatnot. But if we go on to settings and then we're going to scroll down here to privacy and security, there's something new here called passkey access for web browsers. This is now available as a result of iOS 17.4. This, of course, has to do with web browsers that has access to your pass keys or passwords on your devices. Now, if we go one step further and go to analytics and, and uh, improvements, I actually can't recall if it was on the iPads or not, but now going forward, analytics and improvements for Apple Pay slash Apple Wallet is no longer available, especially uh, on the iPad, I mean on the iPhones. The next thing we're going to do is coming in, come in here to Siri and search. We have something new here called Messages for Siri. Messages for Siri is now able to read back messages and you can even auto send messages, but it can read back messages in up to over 22 languages. Going further with messages, if we come in here and go to messages, we have a few other updates here. Uh, Apple has now further improved the security of the iMessage in general with PQ3 cryptic technology. What that is able to accomplish is be able to protect from computers that can try to decrypt messages. And so this technology is very, very important because it now gives us further security when it comes to sending our messages with friends, family, workmates. Going further with messages, we have in here messages for business down at the bottom. Messages for business now allows businesses to message you and actually be uh, essentially verified and that's what you have right here the app store has also been improved the app store now has a splash screen that lets you know that the app store is the most secure place on the planet basically for apps for your ios and apple and ipad os devices and so they highlight that in the app splash screen. Now, if you click on your logo up here, there's further improvements to App Store by separating and giving you a dedicated category for apps and for purchase history. What this is able to do, of course, is allow you to see more of your purchase history and find it much easier at a glance and the apps you have downloaded on your device. And as I highlighted before in my iOS 17.4 video by swiping left you can now or you can delete apps right from the app store I didn't even realize you could do that I actually stumbled on that by accident another big improvement if you will is the addition of over 118 new emojis that you can use to emote and react and text with with your iPads something that I don't know if it was necessarily needed, but it's nice to have. I like the shaking head and the not and the nodding head emojis. Uh, one that goes up and one that goes sideways. I kind of like the indication that those that's what that's for. Basically, like a shaking my head uh, emoji. So I like the addition of that with the iPads and Apple Music. So if we go back to my photos now, and actually come back up here to Apple Music will have one to two new splash screens here as you see it says monthly replay listen now is now home so 
if you look in the screenshot alone it doesn't show you on here oh it does show you up here if you look up here home with the new icon is now the actual default for Apple Music and if we go into Apple Music there is something else that they have brought to the table with Apple Music so upon clicking on it if we go back home and once it loads you have a new mix called heavy rotation mix and what this does is basically take the song that you listen to the most or that you've had on replay the most and it will bundle those into a playlist for you that you could just hit and play so for me this kind of works because i that's how i kind of design my own driving music playlist and so now by clicking on this i think it takes into, uh, into account your playlist based music and music you listen to that may not be on your playlist but you have listened to quite a few times will all be in here so i like this kind of one tap to go uh feature and upon clicking on it you can hit play or shuffle now to me i think they would already be shuffled so there's no point in really clicking on shuffle but you do have the access here in apple music additionally with apple music slash shazam if you press and hold, as you see here, the music that you recognize, you can now add to playlist. So let's just say I click on this one. Way too long. My dough boy. I think this is from the Apple commercial. I think that's what I was actually trying to listen from this device. So you see, you can say open the music, right? Now, they don't give you the same outright access to the add to right along underneath the photo or the album of the song that the, the the song album if you will like they do on the iphone you have to actually come up here click on the three dots and now you have the ability to open an apple music add to library add to a playlist open in shazam or share it so now you can do that with apple with music recognition slash shazam with your apple music you can add songs straight to your playlist now Apple Podcasts has also been updated and going back in here. If we go to the splash screen, you get a new splash screen here. And it lets you know transcripts and search and transcripts and new floaty icon. So the now playing bar is now a floating now playing bar. I like it. It looks good. I like the uh, the the illusion of stacked, plain look, depth, in-depth look. I'm just all over the place with words right now. But you have that ability with Apple playlist and if i go ahead and look for or apple podcast i should say i don't listen to podcast as much on my ipad as i do my iphone but they are in sync with one another so whatever you listen to on one you will be able to stay in tune on the other and as you see the bar floats here and upon clicking on this you see over here in the corner is the transcript button and upon hitting the transcript it shades it to the side and i like the aesthetic of the podcast on my ipad for sure and this is stuff like this that makes you think about maybe doing it on that a little bit more often especially if you're using your ipad already to do other activities instead of putting this aside and grabbing the iphone you can still do both when you're on the go iphone when you're at home ipad and this is what it looks like and you have the ability to search through the transcript four key words so let's say you're looking for something in particular you don't have that much time to watch the, or listen to the entire podcast but you want to get to something that you know is going to be in the podcast or you hope they talk about a subject by using a search function you can search for it and it will ping and start right there or basically you can click on that word and it will start playing from that moment share play is now available with the home pod so that's good to know with, with iPad OS 17.4 and iOS 17.4. And by swiping over here and adding a widget, we have a new widget called the New City Digital Clock. So in order to find it, you just come down here to Clock, and you have Clock Digital, and then you have Clock 1, Clock 2, Clock 3, City Digital. So if you want to add this, simply just add it to your dock like that. We're going to swipe down because we're done. And the nice thing about this clock is the fact that it will actually react with dark mode. Now, for whatever reason, the regular city clock, city dig or the regular digital clock will not react with dark mode. I don't know why Apple's being inconsistent from that standpoint. 
because both this clock and what was it clock one uh, clock three i think the other square analog clock they have a city version of that that also reacts with dark mode but the basic one doesn't so the basic one of this and the basic one of that clock widget for whatever reason apple will not allow to go dark mode reactive like this digital clock and so this is why i use this digital clock on my iphone i don't use it on my ipad because it's too small if they gave us a bigger version that's the other thing that's kind of confusing that's a third party widget that's a third party widget but for whatever reason apple will not give us big versions well i mean they do of apple music but they don't give us a big clock version and for the iPad, you have all the screen real estate. We would like to use some of it to create our own aesthetic, and part of that would be using a clock widget. And these these clock widgets are just really small. And the next app that I stay in kind of the most on this is Files app, not Safari. Files app, Files app now has an updated icon for the cloud drive, as you guys can see right there. It's more consistent with the rest of their icons. So it's good to see that come over here to the files app. And last but not least that we're gonna address very briefly is the EU has now allowed side loading and third party apps and web browsers to the iPhone, not the iPad, including gaming based streaming apps like nvidia's geforce and epic games the, the epic store or the epic game store the gaming ones that i know of i don't know if they're coming to the ipad but i know they're coming to the iphone so again there's inconsistency there when it comes to apple and the side loading stuff i know it hurts them to have to open up the ios ecosystem to that degree but for again the big boy, the iPad, how is it that you don't make available the gaming apps for the iPad? That's something that just kind of boggles my mind because this is the place you'd want to play those games on, not necessarily the iPhone. But nonetheless, the EU has affected Apple to have to open up the App Store and allow for third-party web browsers along with third-party side-loading and we'll see how that affects everything going forward this is just for now so this could come later in future updates when it comes to the ipads and other apple devices but for now a lot of that is just exclusive to the iphone the ipad gets skipped so this is the coverage of ipad os 17.4 we're running it for a day or so been pretty pretty clean pretty good and again when i get into my ipad pro review i'll talk about some of the things that we may not see when it comes to these updates but you feel it and you experience it as you use the device. So be on, on the lookout for that video coming probably later this week, depending on if any more software drops from Apple this week. But again, as always, if you guys haven't already, make sure to like the like button, subscribe to the channel, the notification bell. It's all free that way you my videos. So you and I can sit back and actually subscribe. Which man, Mike is signing out until the next video. Wait for it.